Hi, it's Deb with the Help Club for Moms. Well, did you know that you can have a chink in your armor? Just like the Roman soldiers who wore armor into battle could develop chinks in their armor, you can develop a chink in your armor. A chink in your armor is any area of your life that you allow Satan to tempt you. He can tempt you to fear. He can tempt you to condemn yourself. There's so many ways. And Satan is out to kill, to steal, and destroy. And that's what the Word of God says. And he hates your life. He hates that you have a Christian family. He hates that you're married or you're trying to stay married. He hates it. He hates it. And anything good that goes along with God's plan, he hates. And so he's going to come against you in your areas of weakness. Now, we all know that God's armor is perfect, but we can have areas in our lives that I like to call chinks because they're little areas that Satan would, likes to pick at. So, for example, whenever I was a new Christian, uh, right before I was getting married, um, a friend said to me, she said, does Randy know what all you used to do before you were married? And I was like, yeah, he knows. But that that single thought when she said that started me thinking, oh, well, wow, I am just remembering all the things that I did wrong and oh, I feel so bad that I did this. And it just really got me feeling bad about uh, myself, even though I was new. You know, when you become a, a Christian, the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new is here. And so when you become a Christian, the truth is you're new. And he doesn't hold our sins against us. You know, I had repented. I had turned away from my sin. But because of that friend saying that to me, it really made me uh, doubt who my identity in Christ. And, you know, this week at um, Help Club, we're talking about identity in Christ. And it's important that you know the truth. Uh, and just like the Bible says, the truth sets you free. And the truth is that you are new. And anything that Satan wants to bring back to your attention is a lie. Anything that you did, you know, your sins um, of the past. So, he, so God wants you to move forward in the newness of life. And Satan wants to hold you back. Another chink in your armor could be if you and your husband are, have been trying to work on your marriage and you've really been praying and maybe you have had a hard season in your marriage for years and years and years and you're just now starting to make some headway and this, the devil can come to you after maybe say you have a blow up with your husband, the devil can come to you and say, oh, it's never going to get better. Things are never going to get better. And you can take that thought and think, oh, it's never going to get better. And then you're blowing, next thing you know, you're blowing things out of proportion. And instead of thinking about the good things that God is doing in your marriage and being thankful for the little bitty gains, even little bitty strides, even if your husband is kissing you when he gets home from work or if he's more patient with the children or if you can see his heart and that he's trying or if he's praying with you or if he's going to counseling with you, instead of focusing on the good things that God's doing, you could really just focus on the bad things in the way that he's messing up. And that's not God's will for us. But Satan loves it because what happens is when you allow those thoughts to fester, you get mad at your husband, you don't notice the good things about him. And honestly, it can, it can set you back for days. You know, some of those thoughts, uh, when I was a new mom, I would have thoughts that Satan would attack. And it was like when my kids would be disobedient or we would go to other people's houses and their kids said, uh, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, thank you, please. And they were really perfect, you know, and my kids would maybe have acted up at their house. And then all of a sudden Satan would attack me and say, you're a bad mom and oh, your kids are, are never going to act right or they're not going to ever be as good as so-and-so's and oh my goodness. So what happens? I have those thoughts and then the next thought comes that's like, oh, well, gosh, I need to be stricter or I need to be, you know, they need to be in line or I would get mad at them or I would get mad at myself and just say I'm a bad mom. And that's not God's will for you either. You know, God wants you to pray. If you're having a difficulty with a child, he wants you to ask him for help. And then use your words to call out what God is doing in your life. You know, God is doing great things. I can tell things are getting better. I can tell that yesterday our children didn't fight for a whole day. Or, you know, finding the good and thanking God for the good as they come. So what do you do when these thoughts come? Well, number one, the Bible says that we are to submit those thoughts to 
Jesus. We're supposed to give them to him. And I like to give, I'll say, Lord, I give that thought to you and help me. I always say, Jesus, help me. You know, that's the most powerful prayer you'll ever pray is Jesus, help me. And, um, and then also the next thing you need to do is be intentional about what you allow yourself to think. And so replace that negative thought with a positive thought. It's what we learned back in the joy challenge, replace a negative thought with a positive thought. So you could think to yourself, you know, I have been noticing that things are getting better and, you know, God has been having my husband be sweeter to me lately. And yes, we might have had a fight yesterday, but it wasn't as bad as it was six months ago. You know, just thinking God is with me. God is helping me. He hears my prayers. I'm never alone. You know, whatever it is, ask God for a go-to thought. For me, my go-to thought is, I'm doing great. Things are getting better. God is with me. God is helping me. I'm a new creation. And so ask the Lord to give you a go-to thought, but change and be intentional about what you allow yourself to think so that the devil doesn't get a foothold in your life and cause that area to have a vulnerability where he keeps attacking you and you let him attack you. And just stay strong in the Lord and resist the devil. And the Bible says he will flee from you and ask Jesus to help you and commit your day to God. So thank you guys so much for watching. We have some great Bible studies coming your way on identity in Christ. And I will see you next Monday. Bye. Thank you.